Hi guys, in this video I'll go with a quick walkthrough of defining the required build steps of the library using Cake, including publishing the result to NuGet. So why Cake? Uh, we can go here to its website. Cake is a cross-platform build automation system for .NET projects in which we define the build by writing C Sharp. Among other things, the main reason using something like Cake in a case like this is a good idea is due to the fact that I'll be using more than one cloud provider for continuous integration. Using Cake allows the build to be defined in one place that can be checked into source control and works on whichever continuous integration system one might want without getting too dependent on a single one so it's easy to hop from one to another without being constrained by the, the way it works on that provider. We could also write a PowerShell or a shell script to accomplish this goal but it will, wouldn't probably be platform agnostic, although PowerShell can also run off Windows, this is, is not the most usual scenario. And being that Cake is specifically tailored for defining build scripts, it has a lot of out-of-the-box stuff to help in that regard. Uh, additionally, given that when we're using Cake we're writing C-sharp, if uh, we need something that's missing, we can just code what we need. And uh, in this example, I, I'll show you exactly exactly that in one situation. So to get started with Cake, we need to bootstrap it. And to do that, we go to the resources repository and I'll download the build.sh or the build.ps1, depending on the system you want to build, or both. If, like me, you want to, to build on, on multiple platforms, and uh, download these files and put on the project root folder. Then running the script will download the dependencies and, and create a build.cake file in which you will define the build tasks. I can show you this over here. This tools folder is created when we run the build. It, it has the dependencies and that the, the the build, the running the script, the downloads. Some are by by itself. Others is because I I stated that I needed them on the build script, but we'll get there. So as a note, to execute Cake on Windows, we need .NET. That's that's a given. And on Linux or Mac, we need to use Mono. Uh, or we could do some tinkering and make it work with .NET Core, but I didn't really play around with that. I just rolled it with, uh, with Mono. It works without, a, without an issue. So now to the interesting part, really defining the build. As you'll see, my requirements are simple, so the build definition is simple as well. Not really something more, very much complex. I'll, I'll go through the file, starting with the dependencies. The, this hash tool indicates is a common line tool that will be used during the script. In this case, I have a tool for uh, coveralls to, to publish the code coverage report. And the add-ins is a way to import NuGet packages. In this case, I'm importing another NuGet package also to upload to coveralls. It's a, a plugin for, for Cake. And I have this NuGet package for NuGet core. In this case, I'm really just downloading a NuGet package that I'll be using later to do some C-sharp coding. That's why I have this using NuGet here. And this heading for cake git is so we can have some features of NuGet, uh, uh, some features of git uh, over here during the build script. So after these dependencies, I'm creating a bunch of variables. Most of them are constants, really. The hard-coded stuff is mostly path definitions, like the solution path, project path, def, test folder, things like that. The others are things the script gets as an argument, like the target, uh, which indicates the build step that uh, that should be run, and the API keys, like the new get API key and coveralls token, that will be used to publish the the new get from the library or publish the code coverage report. So after these constants and environment variables and, and other variables that will be used when defining the build, we go into the tasks. We could just do one giant task, but it's 
splitting into smaller ones is better to keep everything nice and tidy and orchestrate as, as we want. So I start with a clean that deletes the artifacts directory and creates it again for the new build and for the new build results. And I, I run also a .NET clean at the solution level. Both these steps aren't really needed in continuous integration because it always starts in a clean environment after a git clone. But uh, we can also run our build locally for testing and other other reasons. And in this case, the, the, the binaries would stick between builds. That's why we clean. So every time I run build.cake locally, uh, I can get, uh, I, I'm, I'm not worried to have uh, old stuff in there. After the, the clean, there's a restore task. That's basically just a .NET restore at the solution level to restore the packages required by the project. Then a, a build task, which is so obvious in its goal, building projects in release configuration. Uh, in this case, I'm, I'm stating that the task is dependent on clean and restore tasks. Uh, this can, every task can depend on another task. Uh, or we could create some isolated tasks to orchestrate the calls to the others. I have a mix of both. Maybe this could be a little bit improved, but at the moment it's what, uh, what I've got. So regarding the test task, uh, it's also pretty easy to see what's going on. Uh, with the only thing that probably draw some attention is the coverage related arguments. Normally you just dot net core test. It's the usual, the, the simplest. In this case, I'm, I'm creating some settings related to creating the coverage report and using Coverlet. Uh, Coverlet is an open source uh, project to generate code coverage report for dot net core projects. So I'm using the Coverlet to to create this the coverage report file that will later be uh, uploaded and after the test i'm moving the reports the report uh, the code coverage report file to the artifacts just so it uh, doesn't get lost in the middle of all the other files it it's moved to the artifacts where everything every the I think that results from the build i, I put it there Everything that that is important in this case, the package that will be generated and the coverage report. After the test stage, we have the upload coverage task. That's dependent on the test task as it needs the 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 artifact, the coverage report generated, and the uploads to coveralls using that token. We 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 saw earlier. After this, a package task, which basically just packages the the results, packages the the library. So I, I'm passing it the, the the project the project path and the artifacts directory to which it will deploy the the new get. After the packaging, we have publish, which is dependent on package, as we need the package to deploy. And it's over here, I'm doing some C sharp coding, uh, the, using the NuGet core, NuGet package I imported earlier. In summary, before trying to publish the package, the NuGet, I'm checking if it exists already using this is NuGet published, which is a helper function I get. I created over here using these classes from NuGet Core. Uh, this is not. This is this is the one. And so I'm calling this method to check. So only if uh, a new version, only if uh, the version is incremented, is the NuGet uh, published. Uh, I do this to avoid publishing the a new NuGet package. Uh, for instance, if I'm just playing around it with the build definition or the continuous integration stuff, 
I didn't touch anything in the code. I don't want to publish a new package. So I only publish when I, when I increment the version and I, I'm using a semantic versioning approach. In this case, like we can see over here, I'm pushing to NuGet. If the new NuGet is, no, is not published, I'm pushing it. There's the settings, which include the source, which I, I defined earlier, and the API key, which we receive as an argument. Uh, when th to get this API key that's needed to, to publish the NuGet, we can go to the NuGet uh, site go to R and go to API keys. And here we can just create uh, an API key. We can give it a name, set the owner. Uh, the owner is important because we m might want to deploy the package uh, as our own or we could do it on behalf of an uh, organization. And then we can select the packages this API key has access to, or create a glob pattern, or let it do everything. It's all up to you. Now back to the code. After defining all the, the tasks, I'm creating what I call targets. Uh, as they are only tasks as the others, but I'm using to orchestrate what I want, I call them targets because it will be what the what the the, the command line call to build to, to cake to build to build it cake will pass as an argument to tell the the build what we, what it should do. In this case, I'm defining a build build and test. It's what I'm using on Travis CI because uh, I'm on only publishing on app Vayer, or I would be overwriting. One continuous integration system would overwrite what the other is doing, so I'm using app Vayer as the main one. So on Travis, I just want to build and test. I have this complete without publish. That goes all the way to upload coverage, although I don't think I'm using this task. I probably can delete it in the future. Then the complete target depends on if it's a release build or not, by which I mean if it's on developer branch or master. Master is assumed uh, release and every time we go, we merge to master or uh, publish to the new get may happen if the version was incremented. So then we're defining this is like I said, uh, if release publish, if no release, uh, don't publish. Goes all the way to upload coverage and stops stops there. After that, I'm just saying that the default task, which if nothing is passed to to the build command line, it will use default and is dependent on complete. So if nothing is if is said on what we want to to build, it assumes it's a complete build. Now we can. We have this everything in place, and even before we could just try run it, running it locally so we can see how it was it was working. So I'm running this on macOS, and I can I see a weird error happen when I try to publish the COVID coverage report. Didn't really try that much to figure it out because I'm using App to do the, to do the publishing. It doesn't happen on Windows apparently, so I didn't waste time, but. If your main environment is if your main environment is is not Windows, this is something you may keep in mind. Probably not that not a really difficult thing to solve, but I didn't need to solve it, so I just ignored it. So let's just try running this. I'll run it in complete so we, we can see the, the error occurring. But basically, you just build target complete. I could just not pass a target and it will be default, but just to show how to pass these arguments. And go. So the clean. 
restoring the packages, building. Now testing. And code coverage. You can see here. So you can see the test phase. The other phases we can go here, but nothing really interesting. The test we can see that I have five tests and they all passed. Move the file. And then when on upload coverage, there's this error. Option U is unknown. I have no idea why is this happening. Because I'm not calling the tool by myself. I'm using the, the imported the imported packages, the coveralls, the cake coveralls add-in. So maybe something in there or something that doesn't work outside of Windows or only on Mac. I didn't try it on Linux, but okay. In AppVayer, this works without a, without a problem. So I, I ain't worried at this point, but take notice. So it's all. Regarding Cake and NuGet, we are done. In the next video, I'll show you how to configure AppVariant Travis to run this build that we define here. Feel free to drop any questions or suggestions. See us.